Good morning. Our scripture text today is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 through 16. And for our subject, we will uh, preach from the subject, faith focus. Faith focus. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? Most holy and gracious Father, we thank you for this time that you allowed us to gather around your table to feast from your word. Our souls are longing to receive from you. We are longing to dive in and to share and to fellowship, to eat from your table. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Allow your word to take root in our souls, that we will be the salt of the earth that you have called us to be. This we do pray in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, goodness, faith, love, patience, meekness. We are all dealing with distractions because life is full of them. We would not be able to get through this sermon without many of us being distracted by one thing or another. It's not because our attention is so short that we can't focus. It's because life in and of itself is a constant moving organism. It's constantly bringing things in and out of our vision, of our view, and its intention is to, in some ways, entice us. In some ways, is meant to draw us away from our focus. That which we have a keen sight set upon. Timothy began to lose his focus in this text. He allowed the distraction of others to get in the way of his focus on the Lord. <clears throat> Timothy was becoming distracted by what he saw and how others lived their lives. Some spend so much time seeking possessions. Uh, it's important to them to have stuff. And in all their getting of the stuff, again, they were losing focus on Christ. Paul writes Timothy not as a letter of warning, but a letter of correction. Sometimes we need someone to help us regain our focus on what's most important in life. 
because we become so busy and so we our, our calendars are so full our activities are so vast that a lot of times we don't realize that the most important thing that we really need to focus on we've left off our agenda Paul is speaking to Timothy and helping Timothy to understand the need to bring it all back into perspective. While Timothy is looking outside of himself and uh, he's looking at the grass on somebody else's lawn, it looks greener. Well, in this heat wave that we've been dealing with, uh, there's some places that uh, are dealing with droughts. So there's a question, you know, if, if there's a drought, no rain, and we can't really use water to water our lawns, then how is your lawn so green? Again, remember that the grass is not always as green as you think on the other side. Because today, if you don't want to water your lawn, just go buy some grass paint and spray paint your grass green. Well, people are doing it, <laughs> uh, especially in Nevada. Uh, Timothy is looking and he's evaluating life through somebody else's lenses. We do that sometimes when we think that someone may have it better off, that may have it better at life than we do. We, we, we tend to compare, uh, analyze how others live and versus how we live. Paul is helping Timothy to Recognize that there's nothing on, the, on this earth that God has not supplied for us. He has met every need. And it's up to us to find contentment in the provisions and in the blessings of the Lord in our lives. Timothy, a young man in the ministry, he was beginning to really become unraveled by what he saw. And so Paul says, Pull it together. Let's regain our focus. He says, let's do away with what you've been looking at, and now let's focus. First of all, Paul identified and reminded Timothy of who he was and to whom he belonged. He called him man of God. Now, in, in some places, to hear the term or the phrase man of God, it tends to... Uh, typically only refer to the preacher, but it actually refers to the child of God in the kingdom. Paul is telling Timothy, don't forget who you are and don't forget to whom you belong. There's absolutely no good thing that God will withhold from you. Your focus and your attention is on the wrong thing. What you need to focus on is not on possessions, but you need to focus on following after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Because those who are wealthy in the Lord, and I'm not referring to money, is those who are following after these principles. Some of the greatest joy in life is being able to love someone. The experience that comes with making memories and establishing foundation. Understanding the need of patience because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We were all enemies of God at one point. And so we are recipients of God's patience. And thus, we are charged to have patience with others. Because after all, God was patient with us, was he not? It's in these principles, this focus, where we gain the greatest of wealth. Because instead of chasing after worldly possessions, we ought to be chasing after Christ. Because it's in him that we're complete. It's in him that we are most satisfied and our joy is full. 
faith focus. Paul reminds Timothy that he must fight the good fight of faith. That he must understand that all of these distractions, these tragedies, these incidents are all by design are meant to weaken our faith. To pull us away from our attention and focus on the Lord and his desire and his will for our lives. We look at the news and read the news or however we get our news and when we see it we have to wonder God where are you when will these tragedies end when when will these the distractions go away God has already answered that question he's given us his word the Bible tells us that these th these things were going to happen and that we would be forever under attack simply because of our faith. The question is, how do we absorb it? How do we work through it? How do we adjust our way through it? Let us not lose sight of what's most vital and most important. And that is being an element of Christ in the earth that others may be able to see the gospel being lived through us that they too may come unto the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We become so distracted even in church. We develop different programs and we call them ministries and we do so many different things and in some cases sometimes we forget that Jesus is the focal point that he is the center of our affection and attention for he is the potentate the king of kings and the lord of lords so Paul is helping Timothy to regain his focus, to recognize what's most important, and to realize that with all that we seek in life, the Bible says that we first seek ye the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. All other things shall be added unto us. If we're seeking God first, whatever our hearts desire, we will receive it. We'll have it. So in this season that we're in let us not forget let us not lose sight of what's really most vital and most important because all the worldly possessions that we gain we came in the world without it we will leave this world without it that's most assuredly The Christmas, I mean, the, the vacation Bible school thing, Christmas in July, is so on point to what I'm trying to get across to you. Jarrell and her team was able to teach the children that out of everything that we see in Christmas, the elements that she pulled out, the tree and the snow and the wreath. See, I remember these things all speak back to Christ and his love for us, his compassion for us, and our need for him. We are the emblem of his eye. We are the emblem of his affection. So when we gather together as we are enjoying the summer, take a moment and just Look at your environment. Look at how blessed you really are with the family and friends that surround you. Look at how blessed you really are and how God continues, in spite of the challenges of life, God continues to spread his joy and his love all over you. Timothy began to look at others 
and begin to question God's blessings in his own life. Paul says, no, don't do that. Because if you focus on Christ, he is the only begotten of the Father. He is the only everlasting. He is the only eternal. He is the only almighty. Because when we see Jesus, when we are fixed on him, our faith gets stronger and stronger by the day. Faith focus. Let us not forget who we are and whom we belong. Faith focus. God bless you.